Okay, so hello, um, I'm Joe McDonald uh, and uh, I work on a project called the Great North Care Record um, and I have done for the last four years. We got a little money out of George Osborne three general elections ago now uh, to do a project uh, called Connect Health Cities and it was a little bit vague about what we should do so we looked around the world uh, at what was good in terms of connected healthcare and we went on a visit to Bristol and we went on a visit to the Hampshire Health Record and importantly we telephoned the New York eHealth Collaborative and I spoke with Mark Walsh, my colleague, uh, to a guy called Dave Whitlinger, who is chief executive of the uh, New York eHealth Collaborative, the biggest record sharing programme in the world at the time. Uh, and we said, Dave, uh, we're about to start on a regional integrated care records project. Um, if you were starting over and you had a blank sheet of paper, what would you do differently? And he said, um, I would collect people's preferences around their willingness to get involved in research. And then I'd have the biggest research database in the world. Um, and I thought, ooh, that's quite a good idea. Maybe, maybe we could do that. Well, why would you do that? Well, the reason you would do that is that I've been, a, I've been an adolescent psychiatrist for 25 years and uh, I specialise in the treatment of young people with psychosis. Psychosis is a terrible uh, disorder. Imagine getting effectively dementia at 15 and then living with it for another 60 years. That's what an episode of psychosis is like. Uh, for a 15 year old and I occasionally get rung up by people because I'm the only adolescent psychiatrist that they know uh, and one of my mates rang me up a few years ago and said Joe what's the best treatment for psychosis and I have to say of the two dozen antipsychotic treatments that are available I didn't know what was the best treatment after 25 years in the game I don't know pretty sure the answer is encoded in your genome somewhere but right now, I pick the antipsychotic that your daughter or son will get during their first episode of psychosis by lucky dip. Uh, I'm unable to match the correct treatment to the right genome, uh, even though the, the, you know, the science is there to be able to do that, uh, I, I can't. So uh, I'm picking by a lucky dip. If I get it right, the patient gets better in four weeks uh, and their life returns to normal, get your own levels, get your A levels, go to university, have the life that you always thought you were going to have. If I get it wrong, maybe a dozen times in a row, that's probably two years in an institution and you never recover uh, the life that you thought you were going to get. So as the dawn of the age of precision mention, medicine, easy for me to say, um, uh, is upon us, uh, we need to liberate the data that's in electronic patient records um, and that's a complicated business so we, we, we had a go with the National Programme for IT and it's, it's really complex to liberate the data of 30 years worth of GP records for example and one of the problems that you'll, you'll come up against is, is authority. So Max Weber was the godfather of uh, authority, he was a German uh, sociologist, the first sociologist if you like, and he talked about this different kinds of authority um, structural I'm your boss so I can tell you what to do financial he who peers sees um, moral authority I'm your priest so I can tell you what to do, sapiential authority I'm a really clever university professor and I know loads of stuff so I can tell you what's what charismatic authority, I'm a great public speaker who can whip up a crowd um, uh, and uh, persuade people to do what they want to do. All of those different kinds of authority have to come together in a regional information sharing project. So you've got to get the money right, you've got to get the structure right, you've got to get the governance right, you've got to get the morality right, absolutely key, to get the morality right. If you don't get that right, you get care.data. Other problems. So in the region, we have the perfect storm uh, in terms of in the systems that we have to operate with. Um, uh, we've got one of each in the northeast and North Cumbria. Uh, we're evenly split between EMIS and TPP from a GP point of view. 
and we've got one of all the others. Uh, no Epic, obviously, we can't afford Epic in one of these, um, but we've got one and everything else. So we need something that's going to join it all up. So we got the money um, in January 2016. Um, uh, I was on a skiing holiday uh, when I heard about the money coming through and I was asked to get involved in the Connected Health Cities project. And uh, I had a job interview here in the uh, Pitt Street um, where we had a bit of a discussion about, well, what would a regional integrated care record project look like? Myself and the GP called Mark Westwood, who'd been thinking about this for a little bit longer than anybody else, uh, uh, had a bit of a sketch on a napkin, which turned into a conversation a few weeks later uh, on a whiteboard. And this three circles appeared for the first time uh, and uh, became what we would then go on to describe as the architecture for the Great North Care Record. So this is the, 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 the basis of what we're trying to do. So there are three elements of the Great North Care Record. There's the health information exchange, make sure that people's information turns up in A&E, in the ambulance, in the acute psychiatric unit, uh, all over the region, health information exchange. We also want to share that information with the patient and provide them with the opportunity to record their preferences around research, as Dave Whitlinger wished he'd done in New York City, um, patient engagement platform. And the third element is a regional data platform where we can share information with the right permissions and do research in order to uh, achieve two simple aims. Make the Northeast the best place in the world to do uh, research and the best place in the world to get care, most connected health economy in the world. At the time, um, the centre were asking us to develop digital roadmaps. Uh, every PCT, as was at the time, I think, maybe CCG. Uh, had to develop a digital roadmap. So we threw a digital roadmap party in June 2016 in Newcastle University Business School, uh, uh, at which everybody brought their roadmap. And you know what? They were all very similar. And they all, in fact, included um, these three elements that we'd originally sketched out on a napkin in the Earl of Pitt Street, later onto a whiteboard. So the three elements became our approach, a modular approach uh, to developing Great North Care Record. This bit, the regional data platform, we haven't got the money for at the moment. So at the moment it's just a purple blob uh, and we call it uh, rather uh, boringly the purple blob. Um, but the other bits, the health information exchange, we signed a contract for and that'll go live shortly. And the patient engagement platform is also in development and we have the money for. Purple Blob, we're, we're waiting for a means to finance that. We have taken this book, Digital Transformation at Scale, by Tom Loosemore and the GDS crowd, uh, as our Bible. This is, this is the way we do things. We seek to deliver quickly. Uh, and one of the things that we've learned is that actually the only way you can learn how to do this stuff is to do this stuff. Uh, there isn't uh, uh, any other way to learn how to do a regionally integrated care record other than to do one. Nobody else uh, has, has managed to make this work. Um, but we have to deliver quickly for clinicians in order to keep people on board, otherwise the project dies. We've scoured the world for the cleverest people uh, and uh, it was my privilege, thanks to the NHS Digital Academy, to look over my wife's shoulder while she was doing the course and see a 10 minute video by a lady called Professor Margaret Anastas, who knows more about integrated care records than anybody else in the world. So I went to see her in Oslo uh, and had an hour in a coffee shop with her where she explained to me the secret of how you do successful integrated care records across organisations. 
And it was really interesting, actually, because in the past, we've always tried to design an architecture from upstairs to say, this is how it's going to be. Um, and, and she showed me a number of examples around the world of how that never works and how it never can. Because she explained that actually successful integrated care record projects uh, develop in, in small spaces and then the neighbours see that it is good and adopt it. So the standard that works is the standard that's adopted. It's not one that's imposed from upstairs. Um, so she likens the successful growth of an integrated care record to gardening more than architecture. You water what's working with money if you're the government um, and you cut off the watering of things that aren't flourishing. So you have to take this cultivational, modular approach, and we've adopted that. Other key principles. You have to leave your team shirt at the door. So there are 13 secondary care trusts involved here. We've got 12 CCGs. All of them have their own agenda. Um, so we look like we were going to get you know, three or four health information exchanges across the region. Uh, and we needed to make sure that we were all pulling in the same direction. So you have to forget your personal organisational loyalty and commit to the idea of a shared record across the region. There's a huge amount of work to be done in terms of stakeholder engagement. We call this the wall of love. Uh, it was on the wall in the office of the Great North Care Record from very early on. Down the side, organisations who you need to commit along the top. Key roles, medical director, CIO, CCIO, medical director, the head of nursing, uh, head of IG. And all these people need to commit uh, to the project in order to make a regional care record work. One of the reasons why you can't do this on a national basis is actually these people need to trust each other. And to trust people, you need to know them. Uh, and to know them, one of our sayings is you've got to be able to get them all in the same pub in an hour, otherwise your project's too big. Um, and there's a massive amount of work goes into building a wall of love, but more important than that is the, is the trusted relationships, because it's not about organisations, it's about people, about whether or not they trust each other to share really sensitive information. You've got to get your chief executive community um, on board, uh, and we've got ours on board, I think. Uh, here are five chief executives at a meeting uh, at Newcastle Racecourse a few years ago, publicly committing to an integrated care record across the region. Then you've got to get your IT crowd, uh, your CIOs and your CCIOs in a room and they've got to agree on the difficult um, business of having one integrated care record. Everybody's invested a fortune in their instance of Cerna or their instance of Meditech, and you've got a collective action dilemma around, well, which HIE are we gonna go with? Uh, and I'm absolutely blessed with this crowd. This was an amazing meeting, actually. It was a day-long meeting, reviewing the spec for a health information exchange. You can see, you know, how, how hard people are working. I've stepped away to take the photograph and they don't even notice that I've gone because they're so deep in conversation. It was an amazing meeting. But out of it came an agreement that we would do a single HIE, not develop one in every trust. Blum and heck, it's complex. Uh, and when I say complex, I mean complex. Not complicated, that's sending a rocket to the moon. This is more like raising a child. Uh, every day, the, the, the players change, the situations change, uh, uh, and I, I worry sometimes that people who come recently to the idea of uh, digital health records don't understand just how complex it is. It is many layered. So the technology is only one layer of what's going on here. The care record is another layer. The interaction between organisations and, and how records move around is another layer. And then you've got big P politics as well. So 
The mood around national identity cards, for example, can decide whether or not your record programme will succeed or fail. So you, 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 it is, it's, it's complex. I can't emphasise that enough. If you think you can come up with a simple technical solution for integrated care records, you're wrong. Uh, you've got to do the politics locally, nationally, uh, and you've got to do uh, all the complexity of the morality of it. A uh, wonderful book by Rob Wilson um, about uh, how you how you have to get the morality right. A wonderful book by Margaret Alistair about how you have to you have to work with what you've got, your installed base. Uh, and to be honest, you need to read those books if you're going to succeed in this space. You can't um, you can't get it into the 140 characters of Twitter. You've got to do the hard work. You've got to read the books. You've got to read the strategy is delivery. You've got to read Rob Wilson's book. You've got to read Marvin Alistair's book. Principles. Um, we're trying to get it done here. We're not trying to innovate. <coughs> so we'll copy success with pride uh, wherever it comes from. We borrowed our, uh, you know, sort of strap lines and video uh, from Liverpool. Thank you, Liverpool. Uh, we love you. Um, the Stratline Data Save Lives from the Connect Health Cities program. And we borrowed the Information Sharing Gateway, which is a beautiful information sharing tool developed in Cumbria, which we shamelessly stole. Well, we partly finance now as well, so we don't feel too guilty about that, but we're grateful. Thank you, Cumbria. Absolutely key to the development of the Great North Care Record. We spent a fortune and a lot of time running workshops, running opinion polls uh, with the citizens of the North East and North Cumbria uh, and they keep us right and we'll be spending a lot more time and money with them over the next year or so as we develop our patient engagement platform element. Now here's a really old slide. Um, we've got uh, a building which is the foundations is informatics and uh, the roof is public engagement and trust. We drew this early on. It's the wrong way up. The foundations of public empowerment and trust, and that's absolutely key going forward. Um, and I, I, I've left this the wrong way up uh, just to remind me that uh, you can get carried away with focus on the informatics piece. It's about public engagement and trust. So we decided we needed to deliver something to the public if they were going to share their data with us for lofty research so that I can find out the best treatment for psychosis. Uh, and so we deployed something called MIG, the Medical Interoperability Gateway, which gave secondary care doctors a view of the GP record 24-7. Uh, and, and our clinicians loved it. And they used it. And we didn't have to advertise it. And we're up at actually this is out every time I show this slide it's out of date. So it's 120,000 views per month now. So that's 120,000 times every month. I think that's a million and a half a year times that patients get better care um, because we've got better connected information. Shortly we'll be developing our patient engagement platform, an app if you like, so that people can access that information themselves, not just clinicians, but the patient as well, and critically so that it can record their preferences around research and their willingness to get involved. Alexa, show me everybody in the Northeast with prostate cancer. Oh, and everybody in the Northeast who's agreed to be contacted for research, identifiable data for research. Big data, very interesting. The cure for schizophrenia is not in the big data, it's in clinical trials and it's in people being willing to get involved. So we intend to generate the biggest research database, the database that Dave Whitling wished he developed by collecting people's preferences. You've seen that one, don't know why it's there, but it's worth saying actually. Get your messages really succinct, so the best place in the world to receive care I think we might already be actually three or four outstanding trusts, the most connected health economy in the world. Can I see that? Yes, I can. Um, we've got 
you know, over 99% of 3.6 million records shared in the secondary care. I'm not sure anybody else can claim that. Um, so I want to see it anyway. We want to be the best place in the world to do research. Bear seeing again. And can we afford it? Yes, we can. Uh, as a region, we're currently spending £6 million a year on second class stamps, uh, sending you your outpatient appointment often twice and often after the date of your appointment. Uh, wouldn't it be nice if uh, we could connect with you electronically like every other industry? Username, password, privacy settings. It's not rocket science. We can and will get this done. If you want to know any more, drop us a line.